Jesus master have pity on us when he saw them he said go show yourself to the priests and they, and as they went they were cleansed one of them when he saw he was healed came back praising god in a loud voice he threw himself at jesus' feet and thanked him and he was a samaritan verse 17 jesus asked were not all 10 cleansed where are the other nine was no one found to return and give praise to god except this foreigner then he said to him rise and go your faith has made was going into a village so that means he was outside and he was heading towards that village and while he was outside he was met with these folks 10 of them and we read here they were lepers but there's a lot of things to talk about leprosy and lepers in line with what the word of God speaks about leprosy but I'm not going to go in and dwell into that much but I just want to say one thing leprosy is a sign of uncleanliness in your life you're unclean and if you are unclean, you have no place inside the village. Your family, your friends, everyone has to stay away from you. You have no place inside the village you are outside and when we talk about outside and inside we're not talking about like how it is right now in Coimbatore those days outside the village was barren land it was barren there was no life you were I mean these 10 lepers were cast out they could not even come near anyone they had to stand away and keep declaring unclean 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 imagine that life they could not have any kind of intimacy i'm thinking one of you know these some of these lepers would have been husbands but ever since they have been lepers there's no intimacy in his life. There's no love. They may be having kids, but they, they cannot see them anymore. Or they may be sons and sons to mothers and fathers. They could not have the love of their parents anymore. They were unclean. And therefore, they were outside the village. And you see the the priest and the high priest and nobody will come there to take care of you because you're unclean because they have the fear that because of you they can be unclean they can become unclean so it's a condition of hopelessness they had no hope that's why you see they cry out to jesus have mercy or show pity on us because that's something that we don't get it outside this village outside this place in this barrenness in this loneliness in this wretched place there's no pity lord show mercy on us Once you're a leper, it doesn't matter. You can be the most wealthiest person, but you're unclean. You have lost your place. You 
have no place. You know the story of Naaman, right? He was a great warrior. But he was a leper. But he was smart. He was hiding it. Just like how we do. We are so good at hiding. We heard earlier, Christians are probably the biggest liars. Now was a wealthy, he was powerful, he could hide. But you know what? There was one servant girl who found this and said, you know what? The master is a leper. He needs to get healed. He can't hide this for too long because you know what? It's going to show up. You might think, oh, it's a small little, you know, small little habit I have. Nobody's going to know. I can just walk over it. I can hide it. You know, my uh, position or my uh, wealth, I can hide it. No, soon it's going to come out. Be careful of leprosy. Be careful of uncleanliness. Because we are called to be holy. We are called to be holy. So Jesus met them. And when they shouted out loud, one thing I, I like about Jesus, when somebody cried out loudly, stop there's a blind beggar he cried out sitting on the road to Jer Jericho he cried out one day and, and Jesus stopped we need to start crying out loud when you actually see that you know and when you read in Hebrews you see that even Jesus cried out loud in his prayers loud cries he prayed with loud cries when is the last time you cried when you prayed you know we pray our prayers like that not timing oh my god there's a notion next show is going to start soon or next game and we I have done that half time I'll pray so I don't miss the game Right? Loud cries. When is the last time? Get down on your knees. Get down and fall prostrate and cry. You know when you'll cry? When you have a burden. When is the last time we cried for the city of Coimato? What pastor? For what? Cry for what? We are happy now. We are okay here. I'm okay with my job. I'm okay with my family. But what about those who are perishing? What about the lepers who are outside the village? He and he called, they called, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Because we don't get pity from anyone. You are the only one who would show, can show us pity, Lord. He cried out to him. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priest. You see, when you read Rev Leviticus chapter 13, you will see there the Old Testament requirements <clears throat> of how you can be pronounced unclean by the priest. And then if once you get healed, the priest will come and test you and then pronounce that you're clean. Leviticus 
in chapter 13 and verse 2 to 3 you read there that you would they the if there's anyone they feel there's a uncleanness and they have to go to the priest and they will the priest will check you and they'll declare yep you need to go out you cannot stay in the camp and the same way the priest has to come and check and clean and see that you are getting healed and only then you can come inside the village chapter 14 you read that but here you see what jesus is telling them go show yourself to the priest it's amazing when i was reading that all 10 of them they obeyed that word they turned and they walked walked towards the village because you cannot go to the priest unless you're clean but when they heard this word from Jesus they were still lepers they were still lepers they were still the wounds were all fre- fresh it was still the sores were bleeding how can you go to the priest how can you go into the city or into the village because you're unclean you're not clean but jesus is saying go praise god you see that is a faith statement that jesus was testing his lepers today when when the lord speaks to you when the lord speaks to you somebody listening to me on the on, online god, when god tells you to do something First of all he's testing whether you have faith in his word. Faith in his word. But master I am I'm a leper. Can't you see? I can't even come close to you. I'm I'm stinking right here. I've been in this situation for many years. Can you see how do you want me to go to the priest? You see Jesus is the eternal high priest. When he said to them, "Go and show to the priest," he is actually approving that you are cleansed. But do you believe that? Do you have the faith to believe that? And that faith to believe will be shown in the action to follow. You know many times we hear the word of God. You know the clearly the Holy Spirit speaks to us. But you know what? We want another confirmation from a prophet. Let me dial up my prophet and ask whether what is God speaking to him about me? You know these days people are so confused about knowing God's will. I've been having some difficult conversations and arguments not arguments really conversations with someone close to me about knowing God's will God's will is this the word of God read this the problem is you don't read the word the word is not in you and you're searching all around the place for god's will the word of god you study the word read the word abide in the word that is god's will and his spirit will lead you 
But the question is, are you ready to obey it? You see, when Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priests, they could all stood there and argued. But master, can't you see that I have, we are lepers? We, we can't go inside. But they obeyed. Huh? And as they went, as they went, what happened to them? Every step of faith, cleansing was going on. The word of God washes you clean. When you obey the word, what is the word? Who is the word? Jesus Christ is the word. John chapter 1, you read that. He's the word that is in the beginning. It was with God and he was God. This word, when you obey him, that word will heal you. That word will deliver you. You see, when they heard this word, received this word in faith, because you know what? These guys did not have a chance. This was the chance, the only chance that they would ever get. And they believed it. They took that word. I believe some of us need to take this word like that. He's saying that, you know, he's an anchor, right? Anchor. You've seen anchors of a ship? They are strong, they are heavy. These anchors will hold the ship no matter what kind of storms it comes. The word of God is the anchor. Are you holding on to that? Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know King Saul? How he lost his kingship? Because of disobedience. He was a prophet, oh, by the way. He was a prophesy. He was a prophet. He was the anointed one. But he was he disobeyed God. And God said, You are not fit to be my king anymore. You know, we take it so lightly, right? Disobedience is like not a problem. It is a problem in the presence of God. We need to take the word so carefully and obey it because this is life. So as they turn and they started walking, they started seeing that their bodies were turning, the skins was getting healed. Hey, the skin was becoming like a baby skin. Can you imagine these guys? I think, I think, again, I'm imagining this. As they were walking towards this gate of this village, they were shouting more than how they were shouting to Jesus. Looking at the skin, looking at the healing that's happening in their body. Ten guys going nuts, shouting and screaming. And you obey God. You will see the power of his word activate in your life. I can testify of many times when I experienced that in my life. Just sheer obedience, not questioning, not reasoning, not trying to, you know, reason with your intellect. But God, how about no, just obey. And as they went, they were cleansed. I don't know how far they got there. Obviously, they're heading towards a priest or to the temple. But one of them, when he saw that he was fully cleansed and healed, I think he got the revelation. Hey, 
somebody outside the camp gave me a word and when I obeyed him I'm healed I don't have to go to a priest anymore there's somebody greater than the priest who gave his word and his word has healed me he got the revelation that's why you know what he turned back he said I'm not going to the priest I'm going to the high priest hallelujah who healed me and he came back to Jesus praising God in a loud voice you see when you get delivered when you get healed or when you get a miracle I, you know praise God for the testimony how wonderfully God protected you sister hallelujah I mean can you imagine on a highway and I've driven those highways and those trucks are not I mean they don't show no mercy God is so wonderful his word is so powerful every day we experiences his presence in our lives miracles after miracles but how do we praise him thank you Lord we have to declare let the whole world know what God did for you do not be ashamed you know when in, in when you read in the book of Acts Jesus told them don't go anywhere stay in Jerusalem wait for the power from above because without that power you will be sitting quiet you will not do anything you cannot do anything but you need that power from our the Holy Spirit the power that comes from God for you to stand up and testify of what God did for you to become a witness for Jesus you need the Holy Spirit the anointing the filling of the Holy Spirit the power from above you see this guy he was a Samaritan Jews don't like Samaritans. They don't even want to go anywhere near them because they believe even, you know, a close contact with them will make them unclean. But Samaritan, this guy was healed and he came and started worshiping God and declaring God as a healer and giving glory to him. Jesus says, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the nine? They too got healed. Others they had to come running back, right? I believe they got healed. The word of God healed them too. And they obeyed and they were healed. But they were Jews. They were bound by the law. They did not get the revelation that Jesus Christ is the law. Perhaps they went to the priest. I pray that these days that God will open the eyes of us. That we will see that who Jesus is really. That we will give him the glory alone. Not anyone else. Not any building or a church or an organization. But Christ alone as we sang today. The cornerstone. Only he is worthy to receive all the glory and honor. You know, we are learning this subject about worship. Honestly, what is worship? It's not the songs you sing. It's not the words with which you praise God. It's all good. But worship is sacrifice. Fully surrendered. 
fully surrendered. You know, have you seen a sacrifice on the altar? Skin completely taken off. That sacrifice has nothing to say. It has nothing to say. It is completely yielded on the altar. But it's, that sacrifice is not complete till it becomes a burnt offering. You know what is the fire? It's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is a fire that burns you and me when you come and surrender your life and your bodies as a sacrifice. And when you do that, that is worship. That is worship. Songs, singing, music, praising God, that's all the offering but sacrifice is what God wants God wants a contrite and a broken spirit you know when you get broken when you're on the altar so I urge you brothers and sisters as these ten lepers I can tell you once I was like them I had no hope but Jesus came looking for me. Hallelujah. I was outside the camp. I was outside the village. No hope. But Jesus came looking for me. And he showed mercy on me. And I'm sure all of you sitting here, you probably can testify of the same thing. Because it is only his grace that we would receive his mercy not because of anything that I did nothing of my intellect nothing of anything I can boast of but his grace the ten lepers they were obedient to the word of God as I close if the worship team can come and play that last song Christ alone Being obedient to the word. What is it that you are suffering with? You know, when Jesus finally said, Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Jesus said to this Samaritan leper who came back and was worshiping God. And you know what Jesus said? Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. What is he talking about? He's already healed, right? This leper is already healed. But Jesus said, you know what? I am more interested about your spirit. You see, the ten lepers were healed. Nine went away. They did not want their spirit to be healed. They were happy with the physical healing. But this Samaritan leper, he came back and said, you know what? I praise God and God is the one who knows everything about me. And he had faith in Jesus. And Jesus said, that faith has made you well. Your body and your spirit. Today the Holy Spirit is looking at you each one of us as we sit in his presence are you well not just physical healing don't just be satisfied with your physical healing yes God is able when you're obedient to his word his word will heal you but what about your soul is your soul well is your spirit well Can you stand up where you are? As we sing this song. Remember you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's just be honest. Just like this Samaritan leper was.
he came back healed but he said you know what god you know everything about me you know what's lacking in me jesus told to the rich young man you obeyed my commandments great but there's one thing that you lack jesus knows what is your lack jesus knows your lack so are you listening to me jesus knows your lack come to him come to him completely surrendered completely yielded and say god search me lord make me whole oh god make me well oh god even as you are here today perhaps you been that person who has heard the word many times and yet you have rebelled against it you have not paid heed to that word you walked away from that word today the lord is here and is looking at you saying would you hear my word and obey turn around turn from that place turn from that place and that and that path that you're taken would you be obedient because i have a plan for future a good future for you or maybe you are seeking god for your 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 your, your physical needs and that is there's nothing wrong in that but you've never asked god to search your heart to search and see if there's anything that is not that is not right that is making your spirit not well today would you make that decision say god here i am come lord you know everything about me lord search me oh lord i'm unwell i have bitterness i have hatred I've been angry. I lack in self-control, oh God. I lie so often. Oh God, come, Lord Jesus, make me well. Would you have the faith to believe that today Jesus is here? Jesus is here to make you well. would you confess that if you are in any of those two categories today is a day that god is going to come and minister to you he is here right now if you lift your hands up and acknowledge and say god i need you today i need that spirit of obedience in my life i need an intimacy with you god a true revelation of who you really are would you confess and ask god today wherever you are lift your hands up let the lord see god i thank you father for these hands these lives and these decisions that you made that they are making in your presence oh god help us oh god to be obedient as these 10 lepers were a god obedient to your word a god what we heard today take away all this wickedness from our lives that we may lord be truly your children truly your people holy unto thee father 
oh God, come, make us well. Make us well, oh God, that we will be your witnesses, oh God. That we will be that branch that is abiding in you alone, Christ alone, that we will be fruitful, bearing much fruits for you, God. ultimately bringing glory to the Father in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing that prayer. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.